I'm here with Jim Owens. Jim, what's your with, with Ford? What's what's your official title? <laughs> My title changes so much, but right now it is Mustang Shelby Marketing Manager. So we just finished talking about the 2024 model range, and Jim's one of these guys that you often don't hear about, uh, but plays major roles. The classic behind the scenes mover and shaker. And so, Jim, you came on board. So you've been a car guy basically your entire life. I came out in the 80s, 86, started working for Ford then, um, and then did a bunch of different uh, calling on dealers, actually did the call centers, uh, went for a joint venture, did Percepta and set up the call centers, and uh, then got an opportunity um, when I was calling on dealers, it was Southern Virginia, Northern North Carolina. And they're like, Jim, we don't like you for two reasons. And I'm like, okay, I'll bite. He goes, first one is you're a Yankee. <laughs> we can't change that. And then the second one was, you don't know a lick about racing. Remember Terry Mitchell saying that, like Mitchell Howell Ford. And so what I did was I started getting involved in the racing aspect to help us sell cars and trucks and parts. The one in uh, uh, Martinsville, right? Mm -hmm. took. Terry Mitchell took me out, went on the paperclip at Martinsville, did 50 hot laps in an SVO Mustang. I'm like, I'm sold. Like I'm at now my, my history, like growing up, um, was more of a straight line family. Yeah. Um, my dad and his best friend, um, who was a service manager at a dealership. And now that, you know, I did some of this business, I understand the cars that we were taking to us 30 drag strip yeah. were the great ones, ones ride, ride, ride. Um, were probably customers' cars. Um, and they, were, they would take the AMC, I was seven, six and seven years old, in the back seat, you know, with David Hoyt, the guy's, uh, my dad's best friend's son. And we'd literally, it was driving the Javelins. Yeah. Right? The old AMC Javelins that yes. were a great straight line. Um, so I didn't do left and right or oval and, and calling on dealers, I kind of got the bug. And, you know, driving an SVO Mustang, I mean, if you remember that now, it's 197 horsepower right at the oh, time, yeah. which was just off yep. the charts, but it was much lighter weight, more nimble, yep. um, very, very squatty, you know, kind of like that old, uh, like the old Mercur 2.3 oh, liter turbocharged engine. Uh, the one that was in the Motor yes. Trend Car of the Year, the Turbo yep. Coupe. Um, that really kind of, you know, shut the hook. Um, and so then from then on, I was trying to do anything I could to get in the performance environment with Ford. Um, and then in 2000, I uh, went over and started doing Team Ford Racing, uh, did NASCAR, Champ Car, NHRA. We were in the Focus Midgets back then at the day in the Midget Series. Um, and then started working on the SVT team. And that kind of is what started me down this road. So from 2000 through today, I've done nothing but the performance-based vehicles, uh, Mustang and performance-based. Um, as you know, I did a four-year stint working for Carroll, right? Yes. Uh, left Ford Motor Company in 2007 and working for Carroll and Gary Patterson and the crew over there. Um, we launched the Shelby GT. GTH I launched uh, before I left, and then the Shelby GT and the GT500 KR um, did those so, programs. But, but you were also one of, I guess I could say, one of the key figures in getting Carroll back into Ford. Um, yeah. And I mean, that the, the Ford family and the yeah. relationship well, we with could Carol say that you were uh, I was there along, along for the ride. On, that was one of the things and one of the stories that I tell is um, we're sitting there at the Ritz-Carlton. This was 04, end of 04, maybe beginning of 05. And I'm at a table and surround a bunch of uh, people at the table. And I'm sitting in between Carol and Cleo. And uh, so Cleo being his wife. Yes. Cleo, Carol and Carol's yeah. wife. Yes. Um, so um, sitting in between them. And I turned to him, I'm like, Carol, I'm like, you know, we, we shouldn't put your name on this car. And he's like, why? I'm like, it's a front heavy pig, <laughs> you know, 5'4 iron block. At the time, we hadn't gotten into the 500 horsepower yet. And so I'm we're like, number one, the GT500. 07 yeah. GT500. Yeah. Um, and the second one, I'm like, you know, your, your licensees over a period of time have, you know, really changed what your name has meant. Well, Carol got really angry at me. Who knew from that time, probably within 20 months, I'd be actually working. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was involved in it. I, it wasn't the catalyst, you know, the catalyst was that Ford GT program, right? The 0506 Ford GT that really kind of melded Carol back into the fold. Um, but you know, Carol's relationship, like with Edsel going back, Edsel worked for Carol in the sixties. He actually worked and Carol told us that he used to make Edsel wash transmission parts. Now, Edsel then went home and stayed with Carol, like lived with Carol yeah. and drove a GT 500 home <laughs> back to Michigan. Um, but, you know, so we did. So the family really and and the team brought 
Carol back into the fold. So but I should, was part of the team in that time. So we should uh, back stuff for just a moment because there was two or three decades where yeah, he uh, was with the the, the Daytona Coupes and the, no, the but, Aurora but the, engines with the Series One. But but there was a period where Ford and Shelby were like this. There was a point time point in time that um, that it was um, oil and water. <laughs> yes, it was just being just cutting through the mustard. It was lawsuit yep. city, and if memory serves me correctly, it was because of over the use of the GT three hundred and fifty name or something like that back in the early eighties. Um, and yeah, there's all sorts of yeah, conjecture out there. So we could just say from the early eighties on until the early to mid two thousands. Yep, that was when it they started. were separate entities. Yep. Oh, absolutely, and they're still separate entities today. Now there's exactly. an agreement between. The Carroll Hall Shelby Trust and Ford Motor Company, um, but it, there's you know a very close working relationship um, since Carroll's passing. And when Carroll started getting sick, that's when I came back to do Ford, and and I did I launched the Boss 302 and the the 13 the 11, 12, 13, 14 GT 500s and mm -hmm. 15 when we did the Gen 6. Um, but the, there was the the best way to say this is you know it, after Carroll was no longer you know, able to engage, you know, towards that last year yeah. where he's really ill. Um, you know, we still, Carol would come up and sit down and you know, had a lot of input on that. Oh, yes. And, um, you know, when Carol passed and uh, turned it over, you know, Aaron Shelby, his grandson, he's awesome has dude. become, and, yeah. and really, awesome I mean, dude. just such a good guy. But he now, along with Gary Patterson and Vince Laviolette, yes. spend a lot of time up in Dearborn with the Ford team, working on all of the things that mean something to Ford and mean something to Shelby customers. So that connection is still there. See, this is, this is what's wonderful, because when we were with uh, Aaron and Gary earlier today, I was saying, you, you still have actual Shelby DNA with Aaron. And then Gary, to me, having interviewed a number of the guys from, all, I'll even just say the Venice Beach outfit, you know, in quotes. The original people, Venice crew. Yeah, what people really consider old Shelby. Yeah is um, Gary has that DNA. Very so much so. You've got the real DNA, and then you've got you know that, uh, that DNA by osmosis. Yep. And Vince from who heads R&D oh, and yes. design for him, right? Um, Vince it, like could translate what Carol was feeling in the seat of his pants. And this this goes to a point that, uh, that Carol even told me. In many ways, he looked at Vince as the second coming of Ken Miles, because back in the day, that's what Ken Miles was doing. <laughs> Taking yes. the translation, one of my favorite stories is, you know, I'm the new Ford guy coming to work for Carroll and we're out at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway back when the facility was out by yep. Bruton's place, right? Um, and they have the outside road course and yep. there's like a 60 degree right-hand turn at the end of the straightaway. And he's like, Carol, you know, suffering from macular degeneration, right? And he'd be out on the track and he'd be like, somebody go over and stand in the center of the apex and tell me where I'm at. And I'm like, I'm the new Ford guy. So I drew the short straw and I'm standing there at the apex as Carol's coming in, I'm like, I know this guy can't see. <laughs> and he's coming down here at 120 miles an hour in a GT500 and I'm standing on the apex, but it was, it was cool. And he was still driving all that stuff. And a lot of that came, but the reason I'm bringing up the story is Vince, um, you know, Gary is the director of fun yes. and the, the chief durability test driver. Yeah, <laughs> like that, he puts a lot a of hard stuff onto yes. his equipment. Vince is the one who actually can translate really easily pretty close to what carol used to feel from the seat of his pants to what the car has to feel like and it's so cool that that continues even today oh totally agree totally agree you know because when i look at when i look at uh what is being offered it is clearly authentic shelby this is because back in the day when i got my shelby gt is first guy i talked to was uh th this is so funny first guy i talked to was jay mays who was at head yep. of the side yep and so, uh, and this was like 08, 09. And so Jay even told me there's two names in Ford slash Mustang history that are immortal. First one is Bullet from the movie. Mm -hmm. And the second one is Shelby. And then he said, ironically enough, about the second one, he said, movies will be made someday. <laughs> Mr. Mays, you, you were correct. A movie was made yeah. someday. And it was a you know, yeah, it was a good movie. Oh, it was a great movie because once you get past a stupid car geek, where you're looking for everything mm -hmm. to be accurate, yeah. and then you just say, "Okay, did they correctly portray the story?" Yeah. So, and, did and the Carol, answer was yes. Did Carol? Okay. Did Carol steal the stopwatch or throw the lug nut down the thing? No, no, we don't know that for a fact. 
would do we know Carroll would have done that? And, Absolutely. And, and would other teams have done that? Because when I was talking with Count Volpe about when he was racing Ferraris and such yeah. back then, and he talked about the sabotage that would go on in the pits. Absolutely. And uh, I think Carroll even talked about that a bit. So that that to me was totally, in quotes, real, even though it likely did not happen mm-hmm. that way. Uh, you know, he never saw Enzo Ferrari at Le Mans. But, you know, the, those type of things. But that's us. It was he great storytelling. Kind of yes. It was great storytelling. And then the other thing that was interesting was having grown up in California and then spending, as a child, spending my time in Southern California right when Riverside. all this was going yep. on is the pacing of the movie totally reflected 1960s life. Yep. And that that's what I really took away from that. Was no, was, this is where they nailed it. Such a good story. And, and you know, Ken Miles and you know, one of the things that I got to do on the Ford GT program, because that was one of the things that I did. So um, when we when we were up at Pebble, yes, and we brought all the Ford GTs along there, having Ken's son standing in front of the car. Yeah. Right. In that pose, we put him in the pose of his dad <laughs> getting out there, took the picture. It was it was so cool to be part of that. And just, you know, some of the legendary stories that you get to be, to be around people like Carol, you know, like the team that developed the Mustang, you get to learn those stories and be part of it and it becomes part of the DNA of the vehicle going forward. And see, that's what's so great because it's real DNA. This is stuff that actually happens. Now I'm going to go back to the whole Mark versus brand thing. Yeah. Because this is, this is actual history where things are, are coming along versus a brand where you're manufacturing history to try and create something to differentiate yourself from everyone else who's the exact same. So I'd like to tell a story. And you've, you've come to a couple of my events. Um, when we do the track tour, yes. you know, we did with 350 and 500, and hopefully I'll get to do it again, maybe with a dark horse. Eventually want to be able to do that again. Uh, tell a story of it and, you know, of the DNA. And Henry started so the Henry company, Henry Ford. the original Henry Ford. Yes. You know, had run a couple of businesses into the ground already, had moved him and his wife and his daughter back in with his family, moved and went to work for Thomas Edison, right? And I can imagine all the patents between those two. Um, And then he built a race car with Spider Huff, his crew chief, a car called Sweepstakes. And a long story, let me just fun stories about that. But built that car, went out, challenged Alexander Winton to a 10 lap grudge match race at Gross Point Farms, (laughs) right? And he, Henry ended up beating him. Um, And he sold the car that day. Sold the trophy that day. We never found the trophy. We do have the car. And long story behind that, kind of funny. Um, we rebuilt it and actually staged the race again with the went on the hundred years of Ford racing. Um, but that DNA carried. So he sold the car, yes. sold the trophy, took the prize winning, grabbed some investors out of the stand. Eighteen months later, Ford Motor Company started in 1903. So that DNA of performance goes all the way through. And I always love to tell the story with Henry, who was the global Ford performance marketing manager. Mm -hmm. I worked for Henry for two or three years. Now he's on the board of directors, took over the seat from Edsel when Edsel retired. Um, So Henry would be there and I'd be like, okay, I'd like to tell this and just poking a little fun at the competition too. You know, Dodge would hire screen actor guild members to portray the Dodge brothers in their commercial. I work for Henry Ford III, who is direct DNA from the first Ford racing driver winner. That DNA connects all the way through in all of the products that we do from a performance standpoint. And then when and then when you look at the Deuce, Henry Ford II. So in 1957, the American Manufacturers Association came out and said, okay, we're doing a ban on racing. And so everyone was kind of doing it stereotypically until, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, college education work there, <laughs> is um, it was like in 62 where he just said, okay, we ain't doing that anymore. We're going racing. And so there he was taking over, you know, the whole DNA, total performance era. And then they try and go and buy Ferrari, which actually did happen and yep. did not work. And uh, which then became the instigator of, Fine, go beat them. Go beat them. That's right. And then it's just like, okay, how much should we spend? Who said anything about a budget? Go beat them. Yeah, and then you think of some of like the NASCAR things. Like, and we've put this in ads. So, but if you do the math, you can kind of see what it is. Like the Wood Brothers, Len and Eddie and Glenn. I mean, just love that family. They've won every decade since the 50s in NASCAR for Ford Motor Company. Wow. Well, if you do that math, 
well, they were running Fords when we were supposedly not doing yes. this. So the Wood Brothers back there, we were probably, I don't know this to be a fact, right? But we were supporting the Wood Brothers running Ford products as they were racing all the way through that era. And so uh, talking about going fast and this, that, and the other thing, you were telling me a story about, did you grenade a clutch or something? Oh, like gosh. That? Yeah. So, yeah. So one of the things, again, Told you before you're one of the top 10 stories that i've had in my career right uh, one of my one of my biggest ones that that i had an opportunity to be part of is when you buy and it started with the boss 302 when you buy a boss 302 included in the purchase price is the day to come out at the time to miller motorsports yes right so that was out in utah ford performance racing school our equipment professional instructors teach you to get the most out of your car that you can so did Boss 302, we ended up doing GT350, GT500, Mach 1. What you do is you got an opportunity to go out there for, all, and, and I am so happy, we have put more than 4,000 people through just the Mustang classes. Nice. Um, so, to get to the story, I'm out there doing a development day. Chase Briscoe is running one of the cars the NASCAR runs in, in the NASCAR series and actually is sponsored by partially by the Ford Performance Racing School. So I'm out there and I'm running with Chase. And I'm like, well, oh, of course I can go after it. Got <laughs> pound my chest, got to go after yeah. it. And I'm trying to go down the back stretch. And there with the little hairpin on the on the inside road course that you know runs the roval there. And I blow the blow the rep matching, pull in the thing, limp it back into the garage. And of course I go to the mechanics there. I'm like, hey, when you tear this apart, would you let me know whether it was pilot error or if it was mechanical? And I didn't hear anything. And I kept asking, they're like, no, we don't know. So they call me and they're like, um, Jim, uh, we were coming up to pick up parts. And they're like, uh, we're up in Dearborn. Um, you know, where do you live? And I said, oh, I'm over here, but you can come over to the church parking lot because I know you got your trailer. He goes, well, you better bring your truck. I'm like, what? So what they did was they took the clutch that I blew apart through pilot error and re-welded the pieces hanging off in various configurations. And that sits in the living room next to a Formula One wheel and a supercharger off of the 2022 Shelby GT500 that sits on the desk there in the, in the, in the family room. So you've got all this history with Ford, in particular with Mustang. So let us I'll give you a two-parter question because I could sit here forever. Well, would we'll, so we don't go till midnight, yeah. and you've got to pick up the wife at the airport. <laughs> um, if you could have any three Fords, what would they be? And then, would any of those, and if not, uh, if you could have three Fords that you have had your hands involved in, what would those be? All right, so three overall. Um, I told you the story about you know how I got hooked on this, so I'd love an SVO. Love an SVO Mustang. That's not my favorite though. My favorite one still is a Mach 1 71 blue with silver stripes. Um, one went across the Bear Jackson. That's where we're at here. Um, in West Palm Beach, this has to be 2008 or 9. Was working for Carol at the time and had the passes on there. And most of the bidders, it was Spanky in the group back yep. then. Um, no, me. So I'm in there and I see this thing go across and it's like 17, 18. And I'm like, yep. oh, all of a sudden I'm like raising my hand. I'm like, the hell am I doing? <laughs> you know, when I bring something home, I was married at the time, uh, my my kid's mom. And, uh, um, you know, I'd bring home a Matchbox car. Yeah. If I showed up with a Mach 1, <laughs> that might have been a different story. Um, and I finally got in there and, and I stopped bidding at like 23 or 24,000. I should have continued to bid. It flipped yes. the next year at like 41,000. Um, but, but anyways, that Mach 171 is one. The SVO Mustang. Yep. Um, and this is going to sound weird. Um, the first company car that I got after driving a diesel rabbit <laughs> out of college was the 1986 Motor Trend Car of the Year, the Mustang or the Thunderbird Turbo Coupe. I would love one of those Turbo Coupes. I just would love, just from the heritage aspect of it and what it means to I'd me. I imagine going out and getting one of those, they would be dirt. Oh, yeah. And, but they, you know, that, that engine, the 2 yes. 3 with the turbocharger, yeah. you know, Mercur XR4 Ti yep. that I spent yep. a bunch of time in. Um, but those would be some of the cars that, like, from me, like, from th something that means something to me. Of the ones I've been involved in, for sure, the Boss 302. That car was so much fun. Um, the 23. 15 mm -hmm. Shelby GT350. Shortest volume of any model year that Mustang has run. It was 137 vehicles. We did 50 of the tech packs, 50 of the track packs, 
to celebrate 50 years. Okay. And then we did 37 of the R models, competition models, which yep. is the number Carol believed because most that people he had think built. it's 36. Sack and yep. everybody else is 36. Carol kept saying no. No, it's 37. 37. 37. Yep. And he talked yep. about the Geddes car that went to the Geddes racing team yep. back in the yep. day and all that stuff. So what we did is to play on that, we did 37 of them. Um, I would love to have that car. That flat plane crank, you know, the way that it that that just sings as it goes yes. up to 8,250 RPMs. Like in third gear, you're, you know, I've run a lot at Tulsa when we do the Mid-America event that's been going on 40 years. When you're pulling in that car in third gear at eight grand, there's and something magical it, that happens. Because it's interesting how third gear can transform a car. It's yeah. just like when, because second's great, but you know, second's going to end yeah. somewhere. It's like when you go to like 120 and third or yeah. something like that. That's and it the is. way you feel it pull. That's that sensation. And the so, sound and the yes. that way that it balances with the flat plane. I love it. Um, and then while I have um, an 07 uh, GT 500 mm -hmm. KR, you remember they were 08s. Yes. Mine was one of the development cars, so that's kind of special. And I kind of yeah, have of it course. in there. So that let's throw that one out. The other one would probably be the 0506 Ford GT. Like that car, you know, we that, that really transformed how we went after performance and to be involved in that program um, through the SVT team at the time was extremely, extremely good. So those would be the three cars. That it was, it was a great piece because I probably drove three or four of them back in the day. Yeah. When you guys did the launch, I was on that program. I drove one as a pace car uh, down at IRP. And <laughs> so you know, remember the small racetrack NASCAR used to use the Bush series and the truck series before they'd run the brickyard for the NASCAR Winston Cup yep. or, or whatever cup we're calling it, right? Old school Winston Cup. Um, so I drove down the car instead of shipping it. I drove it from Dearborn down there. Uh, Dave Hoots, who is, I, I forget what he was doing at the time. I think he's competition director now. Um, Brought it in, had the lights on it, did the graphics for the you know, yep. logo for the race. And so I drove it. I got to drive it on the track as they were doing their, their practice to kind of show Buster, who was driving it, who was going to drive it, you know, what this car was about. And it comes back and walks by and he goes, you would have qualified 27. <laughs> <laughs> Just loved it. But that car was so much fun. And on a road course, um, it was it could be it could put you into a position where you were beyond your capabilities yes. pretty quickly. So you had to you had to treat it right, but when you treated it right, you know, it wasn't derived like the current GT as a race car, right? It was derived just as a car to celebrate it, yes. the pace car for an entire company. Um, but you but you 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 had to be smooth and grow into the car on the it road. It was because it was uh, Ferrari's model at the time was the 360 Modena. And you guys had one for comparison purposes. Yep. And the engineering back in the Which, rush 57 by, by the way, when I was doing a photo shoot on the two, when you guys did the launch of that. And so I was doing a, a shot to get them coming by me. And I was using a show, slow shutter speed. And I'm sitting mm -hmm. there standing between the two as they came. And so we did like three or four passes. And then I was just like, oh, this mother's going to be a little close. Bang! I got hit and knocked over. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. And you guys all oh freaked no. out. I was just like, no, 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 no. Every, everything's fine. Oh. Yeah. So, wow. But okay. it was just like, yeah, because it's like the, the Ford was a machete and the uh, the 360 was a scalpel. They both could cut. Mm -hmm. It's just like, what was the flavor you preferred? Yeah. It was, that it was, car was it, so much fun. Oh, it was. And God, it was easy to get it up to 145, 150. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. In a heartbeat. And, and smooth and yeah. And, and now, because I'm marketing show, I can't wait for the seventh generation Mustang uh, for those people to drive it. Um, I need to spend some more time behind the dark horse, the 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 350, and even the Mach One to a certain extent. Um, I've done a lot of track miles. Yeah, this. those begin to build confidence in your driving skills, and then allow you to stretch out your legs. And I know from the engineering team with Terzis and Krenz and even some of Tom Barnes before he retired, you know, the vehicle dynamics yep. team. I mean, uh, you know, the, the folks who were out at the Arizona Proving Grounds, you know, Del Zio, like those guys know what it takes to put into that car. And it will be the preeminent five liter we have ever done on a road course. So I can't wait. So maybe my maybe mine will change to the current one to the to the dark horse yeah, in there. Yeah. Um, but but right now those would be my three. Cool. Bud, great to spend some time together. Always good spending oh, time yeah. with you.
And uh, thanks for being with us. And see you out there somewhere, aficionados on the road.